Welcome into another edition of Just the Truth. Glad to have you join me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock said that President Trump selling branded Bibles is a, quote, risky business given the sins of his life, adding to criticism against former President Trump relating to a deal that was announced by his campaign along with Lee Greenwood last week. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg yesterday saying that there'll be additional federal funding allocated to remove and rebuild the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, while noting that Congress may need to approve such additional relief. And remember the group of more than 100 illegals trying to force their way into the U.S.? This happened back on March the 21st. A lot of coverage about it. They assaulted Texas National Guardsmen along the way, just pushing themselves into the country. They received an Easter Bunny surprise yesterday. Top brass at the fire department in New York ordered an East Village ladder company with the FDNY to remove a thin red line flag after receiving a complaint from a Democrat councilwoman's office relaying concerns from a constituent that the flag was too politically charged. Also, authorities in Tennessee, uh, in a community there, are investigating after a trailer full of Bibles were intentionally set on fire in front of a church before Easter Sunday services yesterday. Finally, telecom company AT&T said that it is investigating a data set release on the dark web about two weeks ago and said that it preliminarily uh, their analysis shows that it has impacted approximately 7.6 million current account holders. You heard me right, current account holders. So if you have an AT&T account, you might want to uh, inquire about this. Uh, Could be as many as 65.4 million former account holders that were affected as well. We'll give you the update on that uh, in just a moment. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. So let's start with Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock as he was critical of President Trump selling branded Bibles, calling it a risky business. Warnock, of course, a pastor, yesterday gave an Easter sermon at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Martin Luther King Jr.'s church, said that the selling the Bibles goes against the beliefs of the Christian faith. The Bible does not not need Donald Trump's endorsement, and Jesus, in the very last week of his life, Uh, chase the money changers out of the temple. Those who would take uh, sacred things and use them as cheap relics to be sold in the marketplace. Uh, The sad thing is that none of us are are surprised by this. This is what we expect from the former president. If he's not selling us stakes, he's selling us a school uh, whose uh, degree is not worth the paper that it's written on. If he's not selling us a school, he's selling us sneakers. And now He's trying to sell the scriptures. If you haven't heard the story yet, Trump's God Bless the USA Bibles went on sale last week before the Easter holiday. He's doing this in partnership with country singer Lee Greenwood. They're 60 bucks a piece. Each copy also contains copies of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, raising concerns about the rise of Christian nationalism in the country. By some. Warnock continued, the sad thing is that none of us are surprised by this. This is what we expect from the former president. At the end of the day, I think he's trying to sell the American people a bill of goods. The senator also noted the Bible sales were ironic given his history of lying, saying the folks who buy those Bibles might actually open them up where it says things like thou shalt not lie or shalt not bear false witness where it warns about wolves dressed in sheep's clothing, I think he ought to be careful. This is risky business for somebody like Donald Trump. The Bible sales have been widely criticized by others, mocked since uh, their announcement. They were featured on a Saturday Night Live skit. 
denounced by a number of the former president's uh, former allies turned critics like Representative Liz Cheney. Cheney said that uh, instead of selling Bibles, Trump should probably buy one, adding and read it, including Exodus 2014, referring to the verse that commands, thou shalt not commit adultery. What do you think? We didn't really talk about this last week when this first uh, came on the horizon. What do you think about this this co-branded Bible that President Trump is doing with Lee Greenwood? Do, do you find it a little odd like a lot of the, the folks on the left have? Even some people within Trump's inner circle have sort of raised their eyebrow about this. You think it's okay to, to be selling for a campaign to be selling uh, branded Bibles like this? Love to get your comment on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Leave a voicemail if you like. Emails are welcome as well, joey at joeyhudson.com. In other Trump campaign news, the president joined One Nation, Brian uh, Kilmeade, to discuss the lack of respect foreign leaders have for Joe Biden and his administration. During an exclusive interview with Fox and Friends co-host, uh, Trump talked about Mexican President uh, o- Obrador's interview with CBS's 60 Minutes correspondent, Sharon Alfonsi. On 60 Minutes, the Mexican president said, quote, we're not going to shut down our border until you change your policy on Cuba and change your policy on Venezuela. Is it okay for the Mexican president to dictate American policy? Kill me to ask Trump. Trump said, well, he said much more than that. He said he wants $10 billion essentially just to talk, $10 billion to talk, and that comes out since, and no, that wouldn't happen with me with the wall. What changed, Kilmeade asked. It's very simple, lack of respect for the president. They would never say that to me. They would never say that before or even talk like that. They want, a, they want $10 billion a year. Mexico just asked for $10 billion a year. They would never ask it. I would never give them 10 cents, Trump said. It, it, it is blackmail to a degree, isn't it? During the 60 Minutes interview, the Mexican president doubled down on his demands previously made in January through the Biden administration in exchange for support from the Mexican government to halt the surge of illegal migrants. Among them, lifting sanctions on Cuba and Venezuela, sending Latin American and Caribbean countries $20 billion, uh, in aid each year, and granting legal status to Mexican illegal immigrants in the U.S., Mexican president said the flow of migrants will continue unless the U.S. meets his demands. That, that's blackmail, is it not? And the Biden administration just seems to uh, go along with it. They just seem to be trying to come up with a diplomatic solution, I guess. I, I, I don't know. Uh, Trump concluded his interview with Brian Kilmeade by saying, The most important day in the history of our country is going to be November the 5th. Our country is going bad, and it's going to be changed on November the 5th. And if it's not changed, we're not going to have a country anymore. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg yesterday said there will be additional federal funding allocated to remove and rebuild the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, noting that Congress may need to approve the additional funding. Now, the Department of Transportation handed out $60 million initially in emergency funding just last week, days after the bridge was struck by a cargo ship and collapsed. Asked by CBS News' Face the Nation where the money is going to come from, Buttigieg explained that there would be more money on the way, saying he hopes there will be a bipartisan support effort from members of Congress in order to get the additional funding needed. 
So we're using an authority called the Emergency Relief. This is through our Federal Highway Administration. That's how we got those first 60 million out, and there will be more where that came from. Now, it is possible we may need to turn to Congress to uh, supplement that fund. That has happened in the past. If you remember the 2007 bridge collapse in Minnesota, ultimately about $260 million uh, put together, uh, including funds that were uh, put through Congress on a bipartisan basis. And I hope and expect this, too, will be a bipartisan priority. So what exactly would be the pitch to any skeptical lawmaker who says, why on earth should we have to pay for this? Well, the pitch is your district could be next. And also, this has historically been bipartisan. And I'm not just reaching back to uh, bygone eras. Remember, the infrastructure package itself, President Biden's infrastructure plan, uh, went through on a bipartisan basis. A lot of people didn't think that was possible when we got here in 2021, but the president never gave up on the idea. And sure enough, a lot of Republicans were willing to cross the aisle, work with President Biden, work with Democrats to get this done. As you heard there at the end regarding potential skepti uh, skepticism from lawmakers, Bu Buttigieg saying, well, your district could be next. Telecom company AT&T said over the weekend that it's investigating a data set release on the dark web about two weeks ago and said that its preliminary analysis shows that it impacted about 7.6 million current account holders and 65.4 million former account holders. If you've had a, an account with AT&T, you might want to check into this. The company said the data set appears to be from 2019 or earlier. AT&T said it does not have any evidence or of uh, the unauthorized use of the information. The company said it's not yet known whether the data originated from AT&T or from one of its vendors. AT&T said the incident has not had a material impact on its operations and that said the source of the data is still being assessed. AT&T is in contact with all those impacted and has reset passcodes for over 7 million current customers, it said. It also said it will be offering uh, credit monitoring wherever applicable. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the firm and forward text line. Leave a voice message if you'd like. Send me an email, joey at joeyhudson.com. You remember the group of more than 100 illegals who literally forced their way into our, our country, just, uh, pushing past the Texas national guardsmen along the way happened back uh, in March, middle of March. Well, they received an Easter bunny surprise on Easter Sunday. I'm going to give you all the deals details in just a moment. First, I'm going to talk with you about the ex excess weight that you've been carrying for a number of years now. And you've decided you're going to get healthy this, this year. You've decided you're going to take it off. Let me tell you, you can help you with that. Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at PhD weight loss and nutrition. Give them a call today. 864-252-4925. Go ahead and set up that initial consultation and see if this program is right for you. If you, want to lose weight quickly, effectively, and healthy, PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition will be for you. You've heard me talk about my journey with Dr. Lucas and, and her team. I went to the Greenville office. They have offices in Asheville, Charlotte, Lake Norman, or you can do it anywhere that you have access to the telephone, basically. They'll do virtual clients as well. We've had clients in all, all over the country, basically Chuck in Pennsylvania, for example, uh, we have various, uh, clients around in Alabama, Illinois, uh, in the Midwest in Kansas, anywhere you live that you have access to a telephone, Dr. Lucas and her team can help you. And it's all about the science of nutrition, what to eat, when to eat, and how to eat. They will change your relationship with food. They'll give you the skills to be able to lose the weight and to be able to keep it, keep it off as well. Find them online as well at myphdweightloss.com, myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. On Easter Sunday, an El Paso judge ordered the release of you heard me right. The release of illegal immigrants accused of involvement in the border riot 
when a stampede overwhelmed National Guard troops along the Rio Grande on March 21st. Court officials also said that undocumented migrants will stay jailed if there's a federal immigration hold blocking their release, which uh, evidently there are very few of these immigration holds in place. Judge Acosta, Umberto Acosta, made his ruling on Easter during an online teleconference bond hearing in which he accused the El Paso District Attorney's Office of not being ready to proceed with detention hearings for each defendant. Judge Acosta said it's the ruling of the court that all the rioting participation cases will be released on their own recognizance. Yeah, let's let's release them and, and give them a sheet of paper asking them to be back at a future date. And they'll come back. I'm sure they will, don't you? Another hearing for more defendants are expected today, we're told. Uh, the riot, again, March 21st. We all saw video from this, this horrible day where over 100 of these illegals forced their way into our country. That's what you really call, that. that's the definition of an insurrection. That's a true insurrection. These men forced their way, injuring Nat, Texas National Guardsmen along the way to enter the U.S. illegally by, by just pushing the border fence, uh, cutting it in places, making their way into El Paso, Texas. Video footage published by the New York Post shows dozens of adult men ripping away razor wire that had been set up by the state of Texas and charging past Texas National Guard personnel. They then ran towards a section of the border wall where they were blocked from entering further. Now, it's unknown how many illegal migrants were booked on a charge of riot participation, but the El Paso Times reported that Acosta mentioned hundreds of arrestees were entitled to individual detention hearings within 48 hours. These people's, uh, these judges, I don't know where they find them, but they think that these people entering our country illegally have more rights than, than the Americans here who are having to foot the bill for them to stay here, not to mention not to mention some of the crime that they're responsible for. Talk, talk with the young girl in Georgia who lost her life to an illegal just recently. Talk to their family. It's also unclear, according to the report, if the judge's ruling applied only to the riot participation charge and not to assault and criminal mischief charges related to the stampede, related to uh, some of the assault that happened between these illegals and the Texas National Guard. Acosta said at uh, at the hearing, so if the DA's office is telling me they're not ready to go, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to release all these individuals on their own recognizance. No, you don't. Ship them back. Deport them. I mean, uh, again, when does someone... Look, the the January 6th defendants, a lot of them are still sitting in jail. How have you held them this long? A lot of them spent months and months before their trial. Brandon Judd, the president of the National Border Patrol Council, had previously told Fox News that agents were going through video to see who assaulted the guardsmen. They'll be processed for deportation but maintain the ability to claim asylum. Texas also has the ability to charge the migrants who assaulted them. Texas has said it still has the authority to stop those coming across illegally by using trespass laws. Governor Greg Abbott spokesperson Andrew Malaris previously told Fox News the surge in El Paso is the direct result of the unsustainable chaos President Biden has unleashed on the border. The Texas Military Department and the Texas Department of Public Safety quickly gained control of the situation and are working to repair the damage. These illegal immigrants committed crimes in Texas, and the Department of Public Safety is under the instruction to arrest every illegal immigrant involved for committing criminal trespass and destruction of property. Now, you may recall there was a tug of war between the courts. The Supreme Court briefly allowed Texas's anti illegal immigration law, which allows the police to arrest illegal immigrants. 
They allowed it to go into effect despite a legal challenge from the Biden administration. The law was then kicked back down to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which they then blocked it again hours later as arguments proceeded on the merits. The Biden administration has said the law interferes with federal responsibility over immigration enforcement. Well, we see what the federal government's going to do. We see what these federal judges are doing. Uh, Governor Abbott said following the stampede, number one, we're facing such dangerous situations. And number two, Joe Biden, through his actions, is violating the laws of the United States of America. Later on Easter Sunday, the El Paso Times reported that two other immigrants, including a Colombian man and a uh, who had separate hearings, by the way, on criminal mischief charges for allegedly cutting border fences, said they were each jailed on a $2,000 bond. Well, again, where do these federal judges come from? They're, they're Americans, too. Aren't they sworn to uphold our laws? These people who come into our country illegally should not have these types of rights. 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. Top leadership at the FDNY has ordered an East Village ladder company to remove a thin red line flag after receiving a complaint from a Democrat councilwoman's office relaying concerns from a constituent that the flag was too politically charged. Wow. Wow. I'll give you the whole story on that in just a moment. First, let me talk with you about that new vehicle that you're looking for. Are you, are you shopping for a new Ford? Or maybe you want a, a new pre-owned vehicle that you can trust, that's going to be reliable for transportation for your family. Look no further than my friends at Furman Ford and Lawrence. I love doing business with locally run businesses, businesses who are run by families here in the upstate. That's what you're going to get when you go to Furman Ford and Lawrence. Jim and Matthew Furman, their name is on the sign because their na name is on the line with every single business transaction. They do business the right way. That means when you stop in or maybe you call over there or you send them an email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman family. They'll help you navigate some of the great deals they have on their huge selection of pre-owned vehicles, a great selection of new vehicles. The inventory is just amazing right now. And what's even better, when you drive your new vehicle off the lot, you know that your money is staying right here and supporting local communities, our community, your community. Visit my friends at Furman Ford and Lawrence. Run by, talk with them. Better, uh, uh, you, can, you can check their inventory online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Here's what happened in New York concerning this thin red line flag. A staffer from Democrat Councilwoman Carlina Rivera emailed Intergovernmental Affairs Coordinator uh, Madison Hernandez back on March the 19th relaying the concerns of a constituent who questioned whether Ladder Company 11 was violating department rules by fly, fly, uh, flying this flag. The a uh, constituent was told, according to Rivera staff, that the flag was flown to honor deceased firefighters. This is according to an email exchange that the New York Post published. However, he brought up that they could have used a FDNY flag rather than a politically charged symbol. It is both his and our understanding that private political symbols aren't permitted to be displayed on public vehicles, the staffer, Lissandra Rosario, said. Can you confirm if there are any violating flag symbols on ladder 11? Now, the thin red line flag is intended to convey solidarity with firefighters. It's a variation on the original thin blue line flag that shows support for police officers. You may recall the thin blue line flag became most visible in 2020 as a reaction to defund the police movements that swept the country in the wake of the police custody death of George Floyd and the riots that we saw that summer. 
is okay that they flew uh, Black, Fly, uh, Black Lives Matter flags. It was okay for them to write in the streets in big, bold, yellow letters, Black Lives Matter, but you can't, you can't fly a thin red line flag that's, that indicates that, yes, the lives of fire department, firefighters, first responders' lives matter too. In 2020, the commissioner, Daniel Nigro, implemented a rule that trucks may not fly thin red line flags because it violated department rules on altered versions of U.S. flags. After the interaction with the constituent, FDNY Deputy Chief Joseph Shirali told the firefighters at the East 2nd Street Firehouse that the thin red line flag must come off per reporting from the Post. He is said to have told the firefighters he agreed it was ridiculous to remove the flags. That move stoked an uproar on social media. Conservative activist Rogan O'Hanley, who goes by D.C. Drano on X, tweeted a photo of the flag displayed, noting that FDNY firefighters were forced to remove red line flags from fire trucks hung to memorialize their fallen brothers on 9-11. Rivera, who voted to defund the NYPD of a billion dollars, said her officer never contacted Ladder Company 11 about the issue. She said the complaint originated from a constituent and not one of her staff members. A spokesperson for the FDNY told Fox News Digital that it received a complaint from a local elected official's office that expressed concerns about a flag on the fire truck deemed inappropriate. When the complaint reached the top leadership of the department, the chief department of fire commissioner approved the flag to be flown from the apparatus, he said. Wow. Who could possibly object to firefighters proudly displaying the thin red line? When we stop respecting first responders and what the men and women uh, the, these first responders do for our communities and, and we allow this to happen Th- this city councilwoman she should be taken off a of council i hope her constituents yeah may, maybe one complained but you're going to force the fire department to take down to stop flying the thin red line because you had a complaint from a constituent I hope the rest of her constituents show her what they what they think about this the next time her name's on the ballot. Sadly, in upstate South Carolina, we had a firefighter lose his life. Lawrence County Coroner said that a firefighter had died on Easter Sunday after being injured in a crash that involved several vehicles, including his fire truck. According to the coroner, the incident happened uh, in, uh, near the city of Clinton, South Carolina. The coroner said the firefighters were part of the Clinton Fire Department and were aboard the fire engine during the crash. They have identified the firefighter as 27-year-old Michael Vinson of Lawrence, South Carolina. Another firefighter was flown to Spartanburg Regional Hospital for treatment. According to the highway patrol, the fire truck was traveling uh, east on Willard Road when it collided with the 2006 Lexus that was traveling north on the same road. The driver of the Lexus was taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. So our prayer for the city of Clinton Fire Department, this young man's family, uh, we, we pray for, the, for all of these people involved when we lose a, a local hero like that. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639, the Furman Ford text line. Jennifer writes, regarding the wonderful Senator John Kennedy, apologize, don't apologize, whatever is appropriate for this young self-appointed climate change expert who appears to be one of the elite adding to the carbon footprint by flying around the country because they have to, you know. Jennifer writes, and of course, they don't want us doing that. We need to get to wherever we have to in an electric car. <laughs> but regarding the tough questioning by Republican Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana, there's nothing better that happens in D.C. than Senator Kennedy's interrogation of a so-called expert 
or a candidate for a job promotion or a witness, etc., whoever it is sitting before that congressional committee. This show gets broad media coverage, and Kennedy's questioning always works to expose the real person, the real reason that that person is sitting in that chair, and it's never based on merit. You're so right. And they shouldn't be surprised when Senator Kennedy comes after them. And in most cases, it's not even tough questions. It's questions that, that these experts, the, the, the story that Jennifer's referencing here was from an episode last week. Go back and listen to it if you missed it, where this uh, Olympian skier, I forget his name, but he's an Olympian skier, and the Democrats had sent him to Washington to testify in front of Senator, one of Senator Kennedy's uh, committees as an expert on climate change. This guy looked to be like he was in his early 20s. Nice enough guy. But he was there carrying the Democrats' water on climate change. He was testifying about how climate change is hurting the snow and hurting his sport of cross-country skiing. When Senator Kennedy asked him the simple question of what carbon monoxide is and what effect it has on the climate, all he could say was that it had a lot, a big effect, but he couldn't tell Senator Kennedy why. And what kind of effect? And it got hilarious because this kid didn't have a clue of what he was saying. And Senator Kennedy, when he's, uh, when he sees blood, he goes in for the kill. Just made a complete idiot out of this guy. Uh, on the, on the firm before tax line, Carol writes electric cars, question mark. What's next? Electric jets. Oh yeah. They're working on electric airplanes. Carol, don't you want to be on a, on an airplane when the battery gets low <laughs> and you have to uh, search for a airport close by to recharge the battery? Dom in Illinois writes, Joey, me again. Hey, Dom, it's always good to hear from you. Concerning the ban on automobiles by 2035, you mentioned there were nine states considering the ban. I'd be willing to bet every one of them has a Democrat governor. I was shocked not to hear Illinois on that list yet. I'm glad you I'm glad you said yet, Dom, because I'm sure Illinois will be on the list soon. Our encouragement for today comes from a book I have, um, Anchor for the Soul, 366 Devotions of Hope and Encouragement. It's titled, Trust God, Not Science. God's the most unscientific scientist, it says. He has set in place all the laws in nature, but is in himself not bound to them at all. How scientific is it to raise someone from the dead, turn water into wine, and make iron float on water? It isn't scientific, but that doesn't stop God. We're often confronted with problems that get dictated to by the world. Earthquake, for example. Floods, storms, tsunamis, droughts. Whatever you can think of, Jesus is high above all of these things. Our faith in him is faith in God who is unlimited. God is greater than the limitations in our lives today, and he wants to reveal this to you. Trust him more than you trust in science. Our scripture from Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. 864-477-5639 is the firm of Ford text line. If you have a text of encouragement that you'd like to send, they are welcome on the firm of Ford text line. Leave a quick voice message if you'd like to do that as well. Authorities in Tennessee are investigating after a trailer full of Bibles were intentionally set on fire in front of a church on Easter Sunday. Now, now, who would do that? Who would set a trailer full of Bibles on fire on fire intentionally, especially on Easter Sunday? Details in a moment. Portions of today's show brought to you by Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Are you tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff who have absolutely no appliance knowledge whatsoever? And look, it can be a little overwhelming when you 
when you need a new refrigerator, for example. There's so many options, brands, features. It's tough figuring it out on your own, and that's why you don't have to. That's why when you go to Discounted Appliance Warehouse and Pickens, they'll help you. They'll help you make that choice for you. Jeff and Johnny and, and Kyle, the whole team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, uh, first off, they have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. They have nearly perfect reviews on Google. And the team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse has the knowledge that you need to have confidence in your purchase. Appliances are expensive. I get that. You don't want to make the wrong choice. And you're not going to when you walk through the 11,000 square foot warehouse of Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They're going to help you make the right choice for you and your family. They have expert installation. They have an award-winning service department and extended warranties because they take care of you well beyond the sale. Discounted Appliance Warehouse are also, also offer uh, are proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with up to a seven-year warranty on parts and labor. Go by and see my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Find them online at dawpickens.com. Around... 6 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning, the Mount Juliet Police Department and Fire Department swiftly responded to a trailer fire that was located in an intersection that was blocking the entrance to Global Vision Church. The church's pastor, Greg Locke, said in a statement posted on Facebook that the church's security cameras were able to capture a man reportedly dropping off the trailer before setting it ablaze. Pastor Locke uh, Locke wrote, there was a lady that had driven through the night to get to our church, and she was in the parking lot and was able to get the police officers here quickly, but it was quite the scene to wake up to on my first morning back from Israel. The Wilson County Sheriff's Office in Tennessee also issued a statement saying they believe the fire was set intentionally. Hundreds took to social media to show their support for the church. That, fortunately, was able to proceed without uh, having uh, any Easter services interrupted. One user wrote, the evil out there is frightening. So thankful no one was harmed or damage done to the church. May our Lord touch the heart of the person who did this. Another user wrote, God's got the next move. Jesus is alive and doing mighty things. Prayer for the man and also for the church. Onward, Christian soldiers. One comment read, wow, the enemy is stirred and knows his time is limited. We shall not be taken. The Wilson County Sheriff's Office said it is not known at this time if the fire was aimed at the church or not. Sheriff's Office stated, to uphold the integrity of the ongoing investigation, other specific details cannot be provided at this time. Fortunately, no injuries have been reported following the incident. Anyone with additional information or camera footage is asked to contact the Wilson County Sheriff's Office. I hope they catch this guy, don't you? I hope they catch whoever did this. Also in Tennessee, over uh, on, on Easter Sunday, sadly, Nashville police have identified the gunman who opened fire to Nashville Coffee Shop, leaving at least one person dead, four others injured during an Easter brunch at this shop. Police announced that Anton Rucker, he's 46 years old, said that uh, he's a convicted felon being sought for the homicide at Roasted Salem Town, this coffee shop. He says he has ag assault convictions in Nashville and was arrested in Murfreesboro on felony drug charges last October 31st. Police said the detectives are working to determine the motive of him opening fire during Sunday brunch at this coffee shop. Look, the, mo- the motive is just pure evil. We live among evil people now. Sick people. Mentally ill people. Police in Nashville said the shooting happened around 3 o'clock on Easter Sunday when Rucker opened fire inside the coffee sh- uh, shop, striking five people, killing the one man. Uh, there was an altercation between two men at Roasted, according to the uh, press conference at the, um, uh, by the Metro police Sunday brunch was being served during that time period. The altercation occurred and escalated very sharply to one of the men pulling a gun and firing multiple shots. Police said they believe the person with whom Rucker was having an issue was the one who was fatally shot. They also added that, uh, 
This was not a shootout, and they have no indication that people fighting knew each other. Police have released surveillance photos of Rucker. Said they uh, said he left the scene in a Mercedes GLS 450. The coffee shop has not had significant issues in the past, according to authorities. Police said that this is uh, an isolated incident. 864-477-5639 is the Furman Ford text line. Your comments are welcome. Hope you'll keep those coming. Keep your emails coming as well, joey at joeyhudson.com. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Appreciate you joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, go to joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive those emails and find us on YouTube as well. I uh, posted a couple of videos over the weekend. I went to a South Pole Cal conference, sort of a seminar, on Saturday. I, I posted a video of that. If you, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't joined me on YouTube yet, this would be a good time to start. These South Pole cattle are quite amazing. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll spend a little time on that in an episode this this week. You think I'd make a good cattle farmer? You don't have to comment on that if you don't want to. But if you do, hey, send it to the Firmer Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. We're back again tomorrow. I hope you'll plan to be with us, too. Until then, remember, God's got this. He is risen. He's in control.